Today I am going to talk about um, the opportunities for connection, the opportunities to connect people at height within the vertical urban realm. Okay, so the 10 Design, we are in Hong Kong, as we all are, and we have studios all around the world, and that has given us a broad range of experience on different building typologies. Okay. So, social spaces within the fabric of the city are what make our cities livable. And it is those spaces that provide social interaction. Spaces which are now even more pertinent today, given the pandemic, and how we've been potentially isolated from that level of connection. We look to embrace that connection looking forward. So, some statistics to start with. We have 54% of the world's population living in cities today and 70% of the world will be living in cities in 2050. So as we evaluate the vertical context, uh, how do we find opportunities within that to begin to find opportunities of connectivity? I think this is not actually a new concept. We can see visions uh, from history where the vertical urban context has been imagined as a series of connected structures which we may one day perceive our own cities to become. Another illustration uh, from the turn of the century which looks at mobility, the drawing layers in mobility and connection at higher levels throughout the city. So today I'm going to evaluate contemporary uh, case studies of connectivity and then we'll look at some ideas that 10 Design are actually building at the moment within China. So traditionally connectivity within the urban network and the urban fabric has been considered at podium level, street level and basement level. Um, as our cities reach higher and higher into the sky it does raise the question how we might begin to connect those structures at height. So I'm going to very quickly look at two cities as a comparison so that we can begin to understand the context of this idea. Uh, we're going to start with Hong Kong and then I'm going to compare it to Proudhon. Uh, when we think of the vertical urban realm, um, we need to understand the proximity of those structures and that comes back to urban design, urban planning. So here we are today, uh, looking across the water from our elevated position today. And Hong Kong, as we all know, has evolved from Hong Kong Island itself, has evolved from an intricate uh, series of streets and spaces. Victoria Peak to the top of the page, Victoria Harbour to the bottom. Um, this streetscape was originally designed for three to four storey structures, the colonnades that would protect people from heat and protect them from the tropical rains that would come through. Today, that same street network accommodates one of the most dramatic skylines in the world. And that verticality uh, brings with it many benefits in terms of urban uh, density, uh, therefore limiting people's journey times, etc. But also brings with it some challenges. Here we can see a contemporary map uh, of that street network. And that street network provides uh, opportunities in that the proximity between the buildings is so short that we can leap across the public realm. We can cross from building to building. We can move from uh, spaces to spaces very, very easily. More easily probably than any uh, central CBD in the world. Uh, this CBD has been studied for many, many years. This very interesting graphic starts to draw the connections across this public realm and how we connect through the city at many, many levels. And as we reach higher and higher into the sky, one wonders at what levels these connections will begin to materialize. So Hong Kong uh, sets a certain context for a level of connectivity. Proudhon, on the other hand, um, is a more contemporary uh, investigation into urban design. Proudhon was the subject of a large international uh, design competition and here we can see the result of that design competition which was actually an urban planning, government-led urban planning study uh, which looked at a far more, a far greater level of distribution of vertical structures. Those vertical structures were also uh, inter interwoven with a vehicle network as well. The image on the right is as it is today. 
So we can see that spacing the buildings out provides a more breathable city, which is relevant uh, as we seek to bring good quality air into our workplaces and our living spaces throughout the city. But it does bring challenges as those of us who have moved around and through the CBD of Coudon, uh, the buildings are far further apart, the space is greater, you have greater distance to travel. So that connectivity, that social space and the public realm becomes more difficult to traverse. So a balance needs to be sought as we look to invigorate and connect our cities together and the opportunities that that social space presents, picking up on some of the points earlier made by colleagues, the network, the green spaces that connect our buildings together, how do we integrate those into the spaces? So we will now look at uh, three contemporary uh, case studies where a single structure, a double structure, and then a four tower structure where social spaces are integrated into the vertical urban realm. These social spaces bring people together, but they also offer opportunities for greening and amenity space within the city, which is incredibly valuable. So, Fencho, 20 Fencho Street, Raphael Vanoli, architect, a fantastic location within the center of the city, and here we can see a green amenity space placed at the top of the building. A new destination within the city, which brings people together, uh, and provides a, a, a welcome environment, temperature controlled, into the, into the city. Sorry. Um, here we have a very interesting structure in Shenzhen uh, by NBBJ Architects, which weaves two towers together with social space, which brings different work groups together through a series of social and connected spaces. So here we can see the cross-section through the building, which uh, is beginning to connect that vertical urban realm, albeit uh, privately within the uh, occupants of the building. And those connections, libraries, um, and social spaces. A very heroic Moshdi Safdi in Chongqing. These four structures, there's almost a groundscape moving horizontally at height through the vertical urban realm. Uh, a series of connected social spaces accessible to the public throughout the year round, and a greening of spaces uh, throughout this area. Okay, so I'm now going to share with you uh, three studies which have been completed by Ten Design, or under the process of being completed. So a very interesting district uh, in Guangzhou, Pajou, um, the site, Pajou just sits across the uh, to, the, to the north of the CBD, where we know the east and the west tower uh, adjacent to this. So Pajot is a very interesting project. It's a, it's a complete trans, uh, change from the typical land parcels which we find in China as designers, as, our, as the area that we are to design within. These are much, much smaller parcels, and the buildings as a consequence are pushed much, much closer together. Uh, this district is uh, for technology companies and uh, the smaller parcels was done by the urban uh, planning department and the South China University. So our site uh, was located to the north of the district with the central Guangzhou CBD uh, up to the north and directly in front of the buildings is an area of regeneration. It's the Pearl River Delta Brewery uh, location which is already a very vibrant and active um, F and B destination within the city. There's a pu new public park being woven within these spaces, and uh, we were fortunate enough to get the commission to uh, design a hotel and an office tower structure in this location. Our idea at this point was to connect these two structures. Now, going back to the context of the two cities, we have Hong Kong and we have Pudong. What the urban designers have done here is actually bring the structures closer together. So the opportunity presented itself to actually cross the public realm and bring the two structures together. Our idea was then to weave the public park up onto the building and allow the park to exist at height and creating a new public destination within Guangzhou, enjoying a very dramatic view back to the city. That view then is in a mean that space is public. That public space is provided to the residents of the surrounding area. So you can see here at height, this rendering from the early days shows the two structures connecting at a height above the public realm. So the developer had to negotiate 
uh, at length with the local government to allow these two structures to be connected together. The hotel is the shorter one on the right and the office is on the left hand side. So these two different programs are allowed to share the spaces at, at height between the two buildings. So here you can see that idea of the green network that we heard earlier being elevated to the top of the building as the two structures are linked together. The two buildings combined are around 90,000 square meters, uh, hotel and office space. And here you can see the connecting uh, destination location with a public garden on top and then a public exhibition space connecting the two towers together. As part of the planning guidance, this is 20, uh, accessible 24 hours a day. And then you can see the lifts which bring us up. So here is Pajot today. Uh, the building is very near completion. Uh, the developer had a ceremony for the lifting of the bridge and the connecting of the two spaces. So the idea is to bring the two towers together and show the valley and the stepping and the greening of the buildings that sits at the top. Here you can see that dramatic view back to Guangzhou and the stepping and the green spaces that the tenants within the office space will enjoy as they move out towards the terraces and the hotel guests will mix with the office and the general public with this connection at height. In addition to these spaces, we've also looked at uh, passive ideas within the envelope of the building. We've also integrated very, very simple opening panels to vent the office space and the hotel. And it's these simple ideas about user active uh, ability to bring natural air into the building which will help lower the energy reduction. So here's a short video of the building as it currently stands at the moment. So this idea of connectivity at height within the, ver the uh, vertical urban run. So the, we have a, this is a continuing investigation in our studio about seeking uh, how we can connect the vertical urban realm to yield value, but also consider the environmental benefits. So this is a project that we have ongoing at the moment in Xi'an, a completely different climate in the north of China, cold climate. So this was a master plan originally created by Oval Architects for the developer Vanke and we had the opportunity to compete and win for a twin tower competition in the bottom right hand corner, the red shaded area. Um, when we again were confronted with this possibility, there was, we saw the proximity of the towers and wondered to ourselves about this idea of connectivity, social space between the buildings, how we could begin to connect them multiple environmental benefits, they can insulate each other, they can shade each other, and also connect, uh, bringing the vertical community together. So bringing the vertical community of our cities together. Various GFA distribution was studied, and we found the optimum based on uh, interaction with the client. So the idea was to create a series of social spaces between the two structures. And this diagram probably highlights it most simply. We had two structures very close together. The opportunity to jump and leap across that space was available to us. So we elected to propose a series of elevated garden spaces, a series of new town squares, if you like, that connects the spaces together. So here in this section, these rough scribbles show the idea of how we can start to create that green social space at height between these structures. These spaces also offer opportunity for tempering the air as it's brought into the building so that one can have the experience of stepping into fresh air environment as you move through the building. And then here an elevated, so between each of the refuge floors, every 10 floors is a new town square as we move up between this 350 meter high tower and the smaller uh, 200 meter high tower. Again, it's about social connectivity and social interaction within the workplace. How do we invigorate and draw people back into the working environment as people have been, uh, have retreated effectively and we all crave now a new context for that social interaction. So as I said, there's multiple opportunities through these atrium spaces to temper the air, bring greenery, bring social interaction together. 
here a view of this project as we look across to the mountains that surround Xi'an. Okay, and then the uh, twin tower structure and the connection of those two towers within the overall master plan. In addition to that, the streetscape of the surrounding context can be seen to then connect through the two towers up into the sky. Again, continuing this idea and exploration of connectivity through structures, uh, a recent study completed by our studio into a series of connected towers uh, across four sites for a technology company. We treated the project more like a, a campus, an education campus, and explored how we could begin to connect these structures together through a series of social spaces. Those social spaces would then be porous and open to the external environment. So again, looking at movement and connectivity at height and how we bring these spaces together. It started to lead into a very dramatic and diagrammatic uh, program distribution between these structures, crossing boundary lines, crossing the public realm, and how we begin to bring these structures together. And this was then uh, explored with additional greening, again, the idea of the green network and how we begin to enhance the working environment for the tenants within and how we bring those people together uh, as a community in, with external and internal spaces. So I think on reflection then, uh, in terms of the vertical urban realm, and as we see density increasing, and we see the opportunities that that presents to us, we need to consider how to bring people together, and we need to consider how to provide the spaces to do so. Um, thank you.